Hey you all, Farmer Jesse here in continuation of our crop breakdown series. I'm going to detail one of the more reliable cold weather crops we have available to us as growers, beer, sorry, spinach. Spinach can be a highly productive, super delicious, easy to grow crop, but there are many different ways to grow it and many challenges that may arise in the process from diseases to pests to poor germination. And so let's do it. First things first, if you're not subscribed to this channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, you're awesome. And hey, if this channel ever saves you money or makes you money or gets your garden even a little bit more productive, consider signing up to be a patron at patreon.com slash no-till growers. Or you can always support our work by picking up a copy of the Living Soil Handbook or a hat or other merch at notillgrowers.com. Thanks. All right, so I want to make sure you have my full context here. I am in zone 6B, Kentucky, home of the Corvette. That sums it up well. And so everything I discuss here kind of comes from that context. Now, let's start with varieties. There are really three main types of spinach. Smooth spinach, Savoyed spinach, and semi-savoyed spinach. Um, savoyed spinach and semi-savoyed spinach are the crinkly spinaches that are not super common in grocery stores. Honestly, savoyed spinach, savoyed just doesn't even feel like a word after you say it enough times. Savoyed spinach is the main types that we grow here on our farm because I like the flavor and the cold hardiness, uh, but the differences are important. For one, smooth spinach generally grows faster, uh, so like 27 days to maturity as opposed to like 30 or 35 for savoyed spinaches. The yield is supposedly a bit higher in the smooth leaf spinaches, uh, but they do not hold after harvest as well as the savoy spinach. Um, for a lot of the big growers, they are producing primarily smooth spinach to be harvested once as fresh and then a second harvest that will often be processed and frozen very quickly. Uh, if you're a conventional grower, you should tell us like how you do that because I can only know what I read. But the Savoy and the semi-Savoy can have tougher leaves, uh, so they are typically considered more of cooking spinaches. Um, that's kind of really more personal preference though. Uh, I like them raw, doesn't mean everybody will. Perhaps that's also because the Savoy spinaches tend to have a little less of the oxalic acid that can make spinach really bitter for some people. But you will find a lot of customers in general are accustomed to smoother spinaches uh, that they buy in bulk like clamshells at the store. So it can be a bit of a challenge to sell the Savoy spinach, even if it tastes better. Not the worst idea to grow a little of each if you're selling them and see what hits at your market, or I guess at your palate. Commercial growers often select their spinach based on disease resistance as well. So if you're ever wondering why your favorite spinach seed is no longer available, it's probably because the giant growers in California or wherever found that variety no longer had the level of resistance they needed for X disease, usually something like downy mildew. Um, so essentially that spinach variety just gets replaced. Spinach varieties are often selected for their uh, growth habits as well. Some grow more upright, for instance, which is better for mechanical harvesting or bunching or whatever it may be. Uh, bunching spinaches are those that are often bred for like longer stems and bunched together. Uh, I've never tried really selling those at market, but Feel free to chime in about them if you do. I'm really curious, like if you sell bunch spinach. Anyway, bunching spinach could be a way to reduce plastic waste as well, if that's your bag. I really could have chose a better word there. But bunching spinaches may be spaced differently, i.e. further apart in the field than say fresh leaf spinaches. Uh, but before we get into spacing, we should talk about those specific varieties for each. My personal favorites are Tundra and Calibri, which yes, is also the name of a kohlrabi, weirdly, but both of those spinaches varieties are Savoyed types. I also like Corvair as a semi-Savoyed. I don't have a lot of experience with the smooth spinaches, but I have always liked space spinach when I want to change things up a bit. Um, it's a good one for direct seeding. As always, let us know your favorite varieties in the comments section or any general spinach tips you have or anything I miss and all of those good things. Um, all right, let's get into germination because this is inarguably the most confounding part of spinach production. How do you get the dang seeds to sprout? 
First, spinach does not germinate well in high temperatures, no matter if you're sowing directly into the soil or starting the spinach in cells or soil blocks. It prefers an average temperature of 65 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 18 to 21 degrees Celsius. One thing that's interesting about spinach, though, is in contrast to other greens, is that it will also germinate at lower temperatures with a decent germination percentage. It just means cooler soil, it will actually germinate at a pretty high clip. Now, it may take a month to fully germinate at, say, 40 degrees Fahrenheit, but it will germinate. I sow spinach every winter in the field and often have really nice stands in the spring. In fact, the cool soils of the late winter are ideal for spinach germination because as the soil creeps up over that 75 degree mark in the late spring, the germination rate on spinach dives. So ideally you want to sow your spinach before the soil temperatures uh, start to rise too high. This is why it is very hard to grow spinach in the summer, especially here in Kentucky. Not only is it difficult to germinate, but spinach also just doesn't love growing in the heat. But more on the actual growing of spinach in a minute. Back to those temperatures for a second. They are critical for spinach germination um, in the greenhouse as well as in the field. Be very mindful to keep the spinach starts from getting too warm before they sprout. Uh, this is not as hard to do in the early spring and winter as it is in the summer, like say in August when you're trying to get fall spinach going but the soil is still boiling hot. Um, that time of year it takes a different strategy to germinate. For us here in Kentucky, which again, zone 6B, birthplace of Nick Lachey, facts, we have to start most of our fall spinach seeds in soil blocks or cell trays all the way into September. They simply will not germinate well in the field, even with shade cloth and good watering in our experience. So for that, we start them in roughly one inch blocks made by the standing soil block maker. You can use 128 cells, cell trays too. Then we sow two to four seeds per block we lightly cover the blocks with soil mix and place the trays into our cooler for two days. Then we pull them out in the afternoon and set them somewhere shady and cool like our shed. And well, we keep them well moistened until they germinate. The trays cannot get hot. They have to stay cool and out of direct sunlight. Uh, so the second that we see germination, we move them into the tunnel with other mesh trays on top um, for shade. We allow them all to germinate and then we can remove that top covering. Um, we will also harden off fall transplant spinach in direct sunlight like we do our lettuce as explained in this video. Now you may come across the term seed priming from time to time when looking into spinach. This is also something that we do. Uh, priming spinach seed is essentially when you soak spinach seed overnight in water, though most studies you find on priming seed is not in just water but various nutrients. Uh, I like a good compost extract, for instance. Anyway, you soak the seed in some solution of your choice and then set the seed out on a tray uh, of some sort to dry. And then you can seed trays or sow the spinach in the field and that has been shown to improve germination rates. And there's a ton of science to this, but also a lot of indigenous wisdom. Indigenous cultures all over the world have been using prime seed forever. And so if you were at all struggling with getting seeds to sprout, give priming a try and watch this video here for a few more details and info on seed priming. Okay, now let's uh, talk spinach spacing because there are a hundred and one ways to do this. No, I actually counted. It's 101 exactly. It's, it's weird. First, for direct seeding, baby leaf spinach is going to be seeded closer than, say, bunching spinaches. I recommend when direct seeding to sow the seed very close and dense anyway because of that challenge that it sometimes presents with germination. Um, worst case scenario, you get smaller leaves for your first cutting, which is not the worst thing in the world. For us, we use the Jang Seeder with the F24 roller and the gear ratio at 14 in the front and 9 in the back. This gives me a pretty dense seeding ratio in the row. Um, for baby leaf, I will try to get absolutely as many rows in the bed as I can. So that's usually around 12 rows for our 40 inch beds with the Jang. If I'm after a more basic leaf spinach, I will shoot for closer to eight rows. If you have a very fine tilth on your beds, like you're using a tilther or a power harrow, you can get away with using one of the pinpoint seeders. I can't usually do that because of how mulchy our bed tops are. It will just bunch up in the cedar. So I prefer the Jang, but you can also use the Earthway. Great tool for that job too. Um, so I seed it and then I irrigate it well, saturating the entire bed. 
If it's warm out, uh, as it can be in April, I will also use shade cloth uh, over top to keep the soil cool. Um, now for transplanting, I will not transplant spinach for baby leaf or I would not have time to do literally anything else. I enjoy our conversations and I would miss them dearly, vaguely. You could transplant for baby leaf spinach with the paper pot transplanter using the two inch chains, for instance. For us, we just go more with a four inch by four inch grid when transplanting and try to do that as little as possible because that's just a lot of work. You can also do bunching spinach like that with that eight by eight inch grid, basically just giving them a lot of space. I'm not gonna get too much into plant diseases here. I'm not a plant pathologist. That's a very, there's a lot of great information out there about those things, but I will talk about a few things that we see with spinach. Aphids can be an issue with spinach and you just have to stay on it. The second you see aphids, you have to act. I don't use any of the treatments out there. There are some and even some relatively benign Omri approved insecticidal soaps and stuff. But you can also just lightly spray the leaves with a hose to knock the aphids off as they are not good at traveling back onto the plants after they fall off. Uh, but they are masterfully good at reproducing on the plants. Otherwise, airflow is gonna be your biggest thing. Keeping the leaves relatively dry and making sure that they're not just closed into a greenhouse all the time where the fungal diseases and stuff will catch up with them. They need good airflow and they need the leaves to be able to dry off. Okay, so let's get back to harvest for a second. If it's baby leaf, you can use something like the quick cut harvester that you see behind me, but it will likely make the regrowth a little less marketable by chopping it up, like kind of chops it in half. Uh, that's why we have moved more to that sort of regular leaf spinach thing that I can just hold the whole cluster of like four or five plants in one hand and then just cut all of that at once. Cutting it that way is not as uniform, but it will regrow well um, and is easy enough to do pretty quickly. Uh, I know some people also just pick uniform leaves and for chefs and stuff, and that's probably a good approach for, especially for restaurants. Um, just make sure that your price reflects the labor required for that. We're currently in the year of our Lord 2023, I think. Selling spinach at $12.50 up to $15 a pound at market in bags that weigh 0 0.20 pounds or bulk. We usually sell around nine to $10 a pound, depending on the time of year. You may be able to get more or less uh, than that in your market. One thing that I routinely forget in these videos is fertilization. There's not a lot to it with spinach. It requires a decent amount of nitrogen, but because we often plant it so early, especially the early ones, they benefit from the soil kind of coming back into life, the microbes getting out of their dormancy and kicking that nitrogen back in. Um, so oftentimes we don't have a lot of issues in the spring, but nitrogen can be an issue and you'll see it. You'll see the leaves yellowing and that may mean you want to do some sort of fish hydrolysate or something like that that will uh, give them a little bit of a boost in the spring or in the summer if you're seeing any of that yellowing. I find that just a light uh, you know, fertilizing compost, like a good chicken manure, or if you have some vermicompost to mix in there, usually does the trick. We rarely have spinach deficiencies. Just make sure your compost is really well made. Uh, feel free to chime in about your pricing, your disease and pest management, your favorite spinach varieties, or anything else I missed or glossed over or forgot or talked too much about. Otherwise, I'm going to quit now and get back to work. So please pick up a copy of the Living Soil Handbook from notillgrowers.com. If this was helpful or even better, join the Patreon page at patreon.com slash notillgrowers to support our work. And as always, feel free to join us at the No-Till Growers Forum for continued nerdery. That's a word. Now, all right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Bye. It's important for you to know that there was a moment in history, like you were probably doing something important, and I was walking around a grocery store taking pictures of spinach with my cell phone, pretending to be FaceTiming my wife.